What's good? It's your boy CJ Goodfella back with the boxing clinic. Can y'all last up with another video? And um, you know, Lomachenko manager made some interesting um headlines. And uh one of the ones I want to touch on um is they said what well, basically I'm paraphrasing, he said, What good is fighting Toledo now? What the, what does that do for you know Lomachenko's career? Um and I and um and really, that just—I mean, anytime you take a loss, you know the competitive nature inside a fighter. You know he wants to—he wants to run it back and be able to, you know, get the win back. And um, it's just as some of those fighters who get punched and then it's got a—it's just natural where they got to give a punch right back. And you know, Lomachenko wants to, you know, tell and solidify. The one door, you know, the one boogie man or the one nightmare that he has had in his career, and he wants to set the record straight. And, you know, when you're a manager or promoter and you've never been in a competitive sport of combat like boxing, it's something that you probably can't understand or fathom. You know, that's something that Lomachenko probably could be, you know, consumed with, that could be bothering him. He wants to right that wrong because... In his career, it's going to be people that say, well, he didn't beat Salido no matter what the circumstances was. He took the risk. And when you take risk comes, you know, backlash or criticism that you can't get. And that's why a lot of fighters today don't take that risk. And I salute Vassal Lomachenko for taking a huge leap, you know, and taking the risk. But when people when people talk about your career and look back on it, and, and people never going to bring that up, you know, Yo, know, they say it's never going to be. You lost to Salido. How can you be this? How can you be that? How can you be top pound for pound fighter? You couldn't even beat a guy like Orlando Salido. You said you were so good. You said you were this, ready to hit the ground running, but you got outclassed by Salido. But they're never going to tell you that, you know, he went 12 rounds without going 12 rounds in a professional fight before. You know, Salido was overweight. You know, Salido hit. You know, Salido was a tough, rugged, experienced fighter. You know, who actually had wins over Robert Guerrero, but got a chance to a no contest. Who had wins over Lopez. You know, they're not gonna tell you that that how tough of a fighter he is, or how he, he failed the drug test back in the day. That never comes up. It's just did you win or did you lose, and that's how your legacy is determined. And you know, Lomachenko wants to write that wrong, so. Nobody can go back and say Lomachenko was uh, was beat by Salido and just use that to try to hold his career back. And you know, I usually do that fight review. I did a pretty good reaction video, so I decided to dab with this one. Dab a little bit, but, um, you know, then his manager goes ahead and says, you know, fighting Terrence Crawford is, is suicide. And, you know, I understand your team... Um, job is to protect you from, from making bad decisions and probably to guide your career in the right way. But, you know, if Lomachenko wants to do that, let him do it. You know, and I understand that what the, what a detriment to his career could be is to taking two losses inside of 10 fights or 10 fights or and, and below. Or really 20 fights, to be honest. But this guy truly believes in his skill set and truly believes in himself. And, you know, he goes on, you know, Lomachenko goes on and says, what's the point? Or I forget his manager said, of beating the old Manny Pacquiao. And I think exactly, it's, it's what I'm saying to guys, like as far as the Crawford thing as well. You know, what's the point of fighting and beating the old Manny Pacquiao? You're not the first guy to the buffet to do it. The food ain't hot, it ain't fresh, to quote Nazim Richardson. You want to be the first guy to do it, you know? And you don't want to be the sixth, seventh guy to beat Pacquiao. You know, what do, What kudos do you get for that? It's already done. He already been knocked out. He already been outpointed. He already been outclassed. And if the money ain't right, then why do it? If you ain't going to get a $10 million payday, in which why people didn't really understand why Danny Garcia and Andrew Broner allegedly turned that, turned that fight down for $5 million? Absolutely not. But the same people that's, that cry over them turning down $5 million, and then they turn around and say, Oh, he only made 1.5 when he made 2.5 versus Keith Thurman. Or he only made 1.5 versus Adrian Gratidos. Are the same people justifying the reason why Triple G didn't take the $15 million from Canelo Alvarez. But that's another 
conversation for another day. You know, and to keep going about Lomachenko, uh, what really heated up when I started to search and do my research on YouTube and, and you know, interviews, Ellie Setback, uh, Dante Boxing Nation, 7 8 Sports, um, was that, you know, Team Mikey Garcia, which is going to be the grunt of this video right now, they talking heavy. They talking about Mikey could end Vassal Lomachenko's career. And, you know, pretty much people would take that and run with it for what it is and just say that Mikey will go out there and knock him out and just do him dirty and he won't be the same. And I don't think that's what Robert Garcia is saying or what Team Garcia is saying. Basically, it's saying if they beat Vassal Lomachenko and he gets two losses inside of ten fights, he's ruined. He's not going to be as great as people think he's going to be. And he had to be ruined. And I have to agree with that in a, in a world of people – Counting one loss as the biggest detriment in sports. It's, it's no equivalent to sports that one loss has so much bearing on an individual's career, um, period. You know, if you go to the NCAA basketball tournament, yeah, one loss in the tournament, you're gone. I understand that. But one loss in the, you can do that again next year, but one loss in a boxing career today, it's crazy. People just look at it. As is the worst thing ever. Like you just permanently damaged. Even if you lose the majority of the decision by one point. Or you lose on one card by one point. But the thing about the Garcia fight, man, I'm very looking forward to that fight. Um, the backstory is, you know, Mikey Garcia was held on the shelf by top rank for two and a half years. Um, Bob Arum is eagerly and wants to really put him in there with one of his fighters, Crawford and Lomachenko. Probably Crawford he would prefer first to get the job done a little better because he's a little bigger. And uh, Mikey Garcia wants to take on that challenge. You can tell he has a chip on his shoulder. And um, he don't worry about it. He's not worried about it, man. I think he's a very confident young man. Um, I think him and Lomachenko could have a good fight. Does Lomachenko wants to take um, a fight first at 135? First, maybe it's Terry Flanagan. Maybe so. Whatever got Flanagan's name if I murdered Bitchard. Um, I think that would be smart. But will he do it or go straight for Mikey Garcia? Go ahead. But I don't think people know how big and strong Garcia is. He trained. He sparred with Madonna. He spars with Thomas DeLorme. He sparred with Brandon Rios. He spars probably with Leo Santa I mean, not Leo Santa Cruz, but uh, Abner Mares. He spars probably with uh, Donier when he was there. So he... He has a lot of experience, and that's why he looks so crispy coming off a long layoff. Because he got top-notch sparring and top-notch fighting, and he kept himself in shape. But this your boy, CJ Goodfellow.